of St. Mark, the 10th chapter, starting with the 17th verse. Mark writes, As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake, for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and field with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. <coughs> may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Well, here we are the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, and we are faced with another tricky gospel, affectionately known as the rich man's question. The gospel of Mark, I have found, has some very hard texts, texts about how to care for our neighbors and how to look out for those who are less than, who are less than in our society. The Jesus in the gospel of Mark teaches us some very important things but not always in an easy manner to read and understand. The Gospel of Mark, more than any other Gospel, seems to have some very stubborn players enter the scene. The people Jesus and the disciples run into seem to take great pleasure in trying to stump Jesus, to stump the teacher. They continually try to ask Jesus questions that he won't be able to answer. But then I remind myself that maybe those stubborn people are supposed to represent us. I tend to find myself in their shoes, or better yet, in the shoes of the eternally confused disciples. Jesus handles these stubborn people graciously, albeit with an edge of sarcasm from time to time, but graciously nonetheless. Which, spoiler alert, he still does today. We are bathed in his graciousness, regardless of the questions we ask. But at any rate, I am still ready to move on past these difficult texts from the Gospel of Mark that sometimes make us squirm. Secretly, I am ready for Advent, but we have a few weeks to go before that happens. So first, we need to look at today's text. This morning, we find ourselves with another complicated text from the Gospel of Mark. For the past seven weeks or so, we have been following Jesus through Mark's eyes as Jesus teaches us what it means to care for those among us who are less than, the ones among us who are more vulnerable. In Jesus' words, the least of these, the children, those seen on the fringes of society, the people we tend to forget about. These are the people who Jesus focuses on in the Gospel of Mark. While we have been traveling through the Gospel of Mark, we have journeyed with the disciples through the following instances. The Pharisees wondering why the disciples were eating with, un with defiled hands. We met the Syrophoenician woman and her demon-possessed daughter, where the woman boldly proclaimed that even the dogs received crumbs from the table. 
Jesus wondered who people said he was, and then asked the disciples who Jesus was, and the disciples, again, didn't really understand. And that passage ended with Jesus telling Peter to get behind him, Satan. Then a couple weeks ago, we found the disciples arguing about who is the greatest. And Jesus welcomed the child into their midst, saying, Those who welcome the child welcome me. Then the disciples got scared when people were casting out demons in Jesus' name when they weren't working on the same team. The world seemed to always be an us versus them. And then Jesus reminded the disciples to not cause someone to stumble. Last week we had a conversation about divorce. And then this week we have Jesus telling the rich man to give away every single one of his possessions. Where Jesus reminds, us, reminds all of us that for God all things are possible. I personally find the Gospel of Mark to be challenging. We have been on quite the journey and I don't think we're done yet. Today we're presented with another story where we are taught to care for our neighbors, but in a different way. This time, when we hear Jesus teach, it feels more escalated because it has to do with wealth. And if there is one thing we tend to be most possessive and wary about, is when people start telling us we have to give away our material wealth. Because in our society, we constantly feel like we don't have enough. Society tells us we need more and more and more in order to make it. Make it where? I'm not always quite sure. But the catch is that nothing we have was ours to begin with. Everything we have, everything we receive is God's. And I think this is what Jesus is saying at the end of our gospel passage today. That those who have given away much are rewarded much. Jesus ends with truly I tell you there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields and in the age to come eternal life. Jesus reminds us in a not so subtle way that by giving away what we have for his sake, for the sake of the good news, we will be rewarded. By taking care of our neighbors, we are all rewarded. By being generous, God rewards generously. Now, I don't want this message to be one of give more money, although those sermons are needed from time to time. Many of us know that if we so choose, we could rearrange things and figure out how to give more money to different places. However, I want us to look at what it means to give of who we are, to give of our talents and our time, not just our treasure. Because giving of our time and talent is just as important as giving of our treasure, of our financial means. I don't know about you, but I know I constantly get stuck in the game of more. I need more time. I need more energy. I need more money. This morning I need to be healthy. I need more. And when I take a step back, the next question I always ask is, why? Why do I need more? I have enough. God provides. Why do I find myself racing through this world? For what? What exactly am I racing towards? I never seem to be able to answer that question. And then I remind myself that it isn't about me. It isn't about us. This stuff that I feel I need more of isn't mine to begin with. Everything we have comes from God. And we need to be generous with what God gives us. If God gifts us with more time, we need to give of that time. If God gifts us with talent, which I know he does, we need to use those talents to take care of his kingdom, to care for our neighbors, to help those we meet along the way. This is where the rich man struggled in our gospel. He told Jesus he had kept the commandment since he was young, which was great. But Jesus knew he had more to give. Jesus knew the man wasn't living into his full potential. And that's what God wants from each of us. He wants us to use our time, talents, and treasures to his glory. God wants each of us to reach our full potential, to be the unique, glorified human he created us to be. But oftentimes in our search for this ever-elusive more, we lose this. We set aside our time and talents in search of more treasure. We trade our time and our talent for more treasure. And that's where things start getting a little crooked, which is where we find the rich man in our text this morning. The rich man asks Jesus what he needs to do to receive eternal life. And Jesus boldly says he needs to sell everything and give money to the poor. The rich man walks away with a heavy heart. 
And this is where I start to struggle with the Gospel of Mark. Because I think we are like the rich man. We know the answers, but to hear Jesus boldly tell us what needs to be done can be uncomfortable. We know we need to give more of ourselves. That God radically calls us to give up everything. To go against society. Jesus boldly tells this to the rich man. Because Jesus is bold. After all, he came to save the world not by causing a war, but rather by dying as a servant to all. I can't think of anything more bold than that. In the Gospel of Mark, we find ourselves often facing a Jesus who we don't always know how to relate to. I find myself looking at a Jesus who seems to be eternally frustrated at the disciples and those around him. A Jesus who continues to point out just how hard faith is. A Jesus who at times seems to make things look pretty hopeless, but then reminds us that with God, everything is possible. In essence, a bold Jesus. But maybe that's the point. Maybe the entire point of the past seven weeks is to remind us that we can't do this alone. We are incapable of following all the commandments and laws. We need Jesus. We need the saving grace of God. We need a Savior who travels to the cross on our behalf. A Savior who defeats death on our behalf. Because we are human and we are frail. And we can never do what is expected of us. Jesus reminds the disciples in our gospel that for mortals it is impossible. But not for God. For God all things are possible. Jesus is specifically talking about being saved and receiving eternal life. It is impossible to save ourselves. We need God. But I think most of what we attempt is impossible without the help of God. For with God, all things are possible. No matter how hard we try to give away all of our time, talents, and treasures, our human nature is to accumulate more of them, to hang on to more tighter, to always search for more. Like the rich man in our text, we leave feeling grief because we know we can't give it all away. We will never be able to care for the least of these, the vulnerable, the vulnerable ones, sufficiently. But with God's help, we can do a whole lot of can do a whole lot of good in this world by following what God asks of us. We can change the world for better. My word of caution that I hope each of you hears: Yes, we will fail at trying to give away all of our possessions, and we will fail at caring for the least of these. Welcome to being human. However, it's not an excuse to not try. I'm not allowed to throw up my hands in the air and give up. We are called to care for our neighbors, and we are called to care daily. Each and every day we try again. What I find deeply comforting in the middle of this passage is this one little line buried in there. The rich man didn't get it right. The people talking with Jesus rarely get it right. But our gospel passage says that Jesus looked at him and loved him. Even though the rich man didn't feel he could give away all his possessions, which I am assuming Jesus knew would be his answer, Jesus still loved him. Even though we get it wrong on a daily basis, Jesus still loves us. Today, tomorrow, and always. Jesus sees us, loves us, and calls us to give away our things. Jesus doesn't want us to rely on material wealth. Jesus wants us to cling to him and help our neighbor. Jesus wants all of our attention, and he knows that in our never-ending search for more, our attention gets divided. And even though we can't figure out how to give away all of our more, Jesus still loves us. Even though we will continue on our search, Jesus still loves us. Because Jesus knew that for humans, things are impossible. But God can and does do all things. I pray God helps each of us continue to give of who we are. That the world will give us space to use our time, talents, and treasures to glorify God in his kingdom. That we continue to give more and more away, knowing that Knowing that as we are more generous, God will reward generously. After all, everything we have is God. Everything we have is a gift. A gift we are called to share with the world. The good news is that even when our attention is divided and focused on earthly things, Jesus still loves us. Jesus loved the rich man, and Jesus loves you. Now and forever. Amen.